I'm about to drop the hammer and dispense some indiscriminate justice! Hello everybody! Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. I am Christopher Bell, Certified Public Accountant, Long-Term Boglehead Investor, Author of the book Stop Being a Broke Loser. It's on Amazon for $3. This guy needs to read this book so he can actually learn a little bit about taxation and hater of garbage investment advice on YouTube that is going to screw people over. Now today, we're going to talk about the average Joe investor. Do I hate this guy? Do I think he's a scumbag? No, I don't. At least, at least to my knowledge, he's not trying to sell stupid courses and basically tell you to do horrible things like buy highly speculative meme stocks. However, am I a fan of what he's teaching? Do I think what he's teaching is going to help people optimize their portfolios and prepare them for retirement? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I think his portfolio is freaking garbage. And he has 67,000 subscribers. And he's teaching tax inefficient means of investing for retirement. So let's go ahead and watch this video. He's 35 years old. At least he looks like he's 35, unlike Stock Guru. That guy looks like he's like 50. This guy's 35 years old, and I think he has like $200,000 saved, which is great. But he is really not optimized for retirement and I'm going to show you why. So let's go ahead and watch this video where he exposes all of his accounts and we're going to jump around because it's an 11 minute video and I'm explaining to you why his portfolio is freaking garbage. So how exactly does this 35 year old guy who's married and has four kids invest every Woo! single cent of his investment? What the how does he invest every single cent? Tax inefficiently. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor Channel. <laughs> My name is Joe. And in this video, we are exposing every single investment account that I have to show you just how exactly I invest all of my money so that I'm as transparent as possible and you can get maybe just an inkling as to how you might want to direct your investments as well. Every no, don't listen to what he's saying. So let's go ahead and jump ahead. And I'm pretty sure he... Okay, so here's his investments right here. Here's his accounts. So he has a 401k, which is great. You should be maxing your 401k. Taxable brokerage account. You shouldn't be using that unless you've maxed your Roth IRA and your 401k. Dividend portfolio. Massively tax inefficient. Disneyland savings account. You're going to laugh at that one. Emergency fund. You're also going to laugh at that one. And Roth IRA. I like how he ranks that at the bottom, okay? It should be Roth IRA, 401k, taxable brokerage account and then i would not buy dividend stocks just to buy dividend stocks because it's tax inefficient ira account that is also with fidel so with you is my 401 balance of eighty four thousand two hundred and sixty four dollars and 23 cents eighty four thousand dollars i mean that's a nice that's a nice amount in 401k i'm not gonna hate on that do i have more perhaps does that make me a genius no but what I did was I maxed my 401k. I put as much as I possibly could in there because once you contribute to your 401k, assuming it's a Roth 401k, you never have to pay taxes again. Whereas if you contribute to a traditional 401k, you don't pay taxes up front, but you pay taxes in retirement. Now, the reason I say max these accounts is because if you invest in a taxable brokerage account, every time you sell it again, you're going to pay short or long-term capital gains rates. Those can range from zero to 37%, and then your state also gets a cut, and then you might even have an additional surtax on top of that. Also, if you have dividend payers, if you have that in a taxable account, every time those dividends are paid, you incur taxes. You have to pay taxes to the government. What does that do? That erodes your long-term return. If you have dividend stocks in a tax advantage account, you don't pay any taxes on the dividends. That's why I'm so huge on tax advantage accounts. I'll say this every freaking video. I'm hammering into your head. Max your tax advantage accounts. For the love of God, how is this hard? And your date, I've earned 9.16% and I've contributed $4,217.14. Now, it's important you understand here that that contribution... Okay, yeah, he's definitely not maxing it out because, I mean... It, 
you should have he should have contributed at least almost ten thousand dollars by now if he was actually maxing his 401k but he doesn't like that he likes tax inefficient investing so let's see what he has in this 401k 100% stock growth, okay? He's still young enough where he can be 100% stock. That's fine. I want to show you the fund that he's in. Here he is. So he's 100% invested in Vanguard Growth, which is a U.S. growth fund. That is trash, okay? Why is that trash? Number one, he has no international stocks. He has recency bias. He has looked at the recent performance of the U.S. stock market, which has crushed international, and he's extrapolating that going into the future. Whereas if you look way far in the past, you'll notice that sometimes international outperforms. He hasn't done that, which is why he's 100% US stock. On top of that, he's not investing in any value stocks. When I preach you invest in the US stock market, which some of your holdings will be in the US stock market if you buy the VTETF, but you're buying both growth and value. You're buying everything because everything goes in cycles. Sometimes growth crushes it. Sometimes value crushes it. Sometimes U.S. stocks crush it. Sometimes international stocks crush it. But you don't know when those winds or when those tides are going to turn. That's why you own everything and you don't try to time the market. What he's doing, in my opinion, is pretty freaking stupid, okay? He's hyper-concentrated in growth and he's hyper-concentrated in one freaking country. Now, I don't know how limited his 401k is, but they got to have some kind of index funds and they have to have some kind of international funds. So in my opinion, I'm not happy with this. This makes me very poopy faced. All right. So that's his 401k. Not impressed. Now let's look at his dividend portfolio. I'm trying not to vomit while I'm looking at this. So he has $103,000 in a dividend portfolio. And to my understanding, this is in a taxable account. So every time a dividend is paid out, he's paying massive freaking taxes. He's getting bled dry. And when he goes to sell this stuff in retirement, God help him if capital gains tax are high. And when he sells these stocks at a gain in retirement, he's going to pay massive freaking taxes as opposed to putting this in a tax advantage account where you don't have to worry about them. that. You don't want dividend payers in taxable accounts. It is dumb. It is horribly tax inefficient. But of course, all his fans, you know, he's got 200K. That means he's a genius. So here he goes into more detail about his dividend payers. I mean, whatever. I haven't really done it, looked at a lot of these stocks. I'm sure some of these are fine. I'm not knocking the stocks per se. What I'm knocking is the horrible tax inefficiency. What is it? Schwab, US Dividend Equity ETF. Jeez, because like he has all these random stocks. You might as well just buy a freaking ETF, okay? Because like it's so hard to track all this crap. So he goes through all his dividend stocks, whatever. That's all he cares about is dividends and tax and efficiency. Let's see his next account. Now here's where I was like, are you are you serious? His Disneyland savings account. Into the dividend portfolio. All uh, right, next up here, this is a fun one. This is my Disneyland fund for our family. We took our two oldest boys to Disneyland. <coughs> years ago and had a ball with time. Had great Show time. me the portfolio. Our money before that 72 cents and it is one Okay, Global XFDS NASDAQ 100 covered calls ETF. This guy has a savings account in freaking stocks, okay? Now, covered calls basically, you can use that to generate income. Let's let's say for example in this account. This is a NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. So what the fund does is they buy a bunch of QQQ ETFs, which is the NASDAQ 100, hyper-concentrated in tech, and then they sell covered calls, which generates income. So this ETF has a very high dividend yield or distributions yield. However, you're still invested in freaking stocks, okay? Stocks can also go down. And if that's the case and you're saving for a short-term goal and then you have a market crash, you're not going to be able to go to Disneyland, buddy, okay? You don't put your savings, your short-term savings, in stocks. It's stupid because if the stock market crashes, you're you're screwed, all right? This is completely idiotic, and I, wow, okay. Don't ever put your stocks in any kind of ETF that isn't like a short-term bond fund or just a regular savings account. Because you don't want to lose all your money. So this, I was just like, wow, this guy is out of control. All right, let's look at this Roth IRA. 
Let's see how much money he has in his Roth. A little over 401k from my earlier employer that I haven't been actively contributing to. And the reason why is because I, in my 401k, I have to go to do Roth 401k contributions. So I have that after tax distribution, which makes the most sense for me right now because I don't need a significant tax break now. Um, with the, so I'm not going to hit this hard, but the investment breakdown here. Okay. Look how much he has in his Roth. $7,681. So he's funneling all of his money into a taxable account, paying massive dividend taxes, and he's not contributing to his Roth IRA. All he has is seven grand in there. You can put in $6,000 a year. You should not be putting any money into a taxable account you know, for retirement when you have this option. This is ridiculous. And what does he have in here? Small cap, mid cap, US and international. So basically he has 90% US and 10% international. Holy crap. That is, I don't know what his strategy is. Why is he so scared of international, number one? International has outperformed in the past. And number two, he's not taking advantage of the massive tax benefits where you pay zero taxes for the rest of your life by maxing your Roth IRA. Ridiculous. And apparently he's married. He should be maxing his Roth, his wife's Roth IRA as well. That's what I do, but I'm stupid, you know. I don't like crypto, I'm a moron. Horrible. Is 30% large cap, 30% mid cap, 30% small cap, and 10% international. The reason why I didn't go with the total stock market or the S&P 500 is because they are both cap or capitalization weighted indexes, meaning that the largest investments have the largest weighting in the fund. And I wanted to have a little bit more control over the large... To yeah, but here's the problem with that. So, I mean, it's okay if you want small cap stocks, but you have to look at your entire portfolio and develop your asset allocation based on your entire portfolio. So he's like, oh, I want to focus on small, mid, and large. Well, if that's his strategy and he wants to split it up 30, 30, 30, he should be doing that for his entire portfolio instead of just doing it in one account. Because when you do that, you actually underweight and overweight a lot of things because you're only fixating on one account at a time. Look at your entire portfolio as one and then do your asset allocation accordingly. So it's also trash. And he it was way too low of international. It's a small cap breakdown. So I went 30% large cap, and that is actually... Is oh, then, okay, here's the last thing, his emergency fund. <laughs> so your emergency fund is there in case of, you know, an emergency, like your roof dies, or your roof dies, your car engine blows up, or your roof breaks, or whatever. Now, here, he has, once again, his emergency short-term savings in freaking ETFs, stock ETFs. That is freaking stupid. If there's a market crash, which I guess he doesn't think stocks ever go down, your emergency savings go bye-bye. You know where my emergency savings is? In a freaking savings account. Because I know that if stocks go to crap and I need the money, I still have the money. Do I maybe miss out on some returns? Yes, I do. But the money is there no matter what. So overall, this is a garbage portfolio. I mean, he's not going to be poor. He's not going to be bankrupt, but for the love of God, how could you possibly not even consider maxing your tax advantage accounts? What is this guy doing? And then look at all the people commenting. I really appreciate you putting this out there for everyone to see. Yeah, put your emergency savings in ETFs. I'm a teacher. I have a retirement fund. I have found your videos so helpful. Trash. The best thing you do is teach people to be open about money. God, you shouldn't be open about money. I learned more from your channel alone than I did in school looking for God, all these people getting misled. Here's another guy took the plunge and moved my emergency fund into ETFs, stock ETFs. Hmm. Don't subscribe to this guy. Anyway, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you like this review. I'm going to actually show you my portfolio to show you what actual good investments looks like. But that's it. Have a wonderful day. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.